dodge bullets, baby. Ah! This is beyond fairy tale. It's inconceivable. There it is. Doyle's got it. Eastgate steps into poker history. This is the greatest tournament in the world. There's something wrong with this main event. Sure, there's been the usual drama. Yes! Excitement. Oh, baby! But it's day five, and something's definitely different. There are still a surprising number of familiar faces. Hey, buddy. Players who've made names for themselves on some of poker's biggest stages. Eastgate, Harrington, Hashem, Schulman, Esfandiari, Phillips, Tran, Elke, Ivy. Will the November 9 be a roundtable of top pros? Will one of their names be the next added to the list of champions? Or will day five be the end of their main event journey? Welcome back to the main event of the 2009 World Series of Poker presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. I'm Lon McCarran along with Norman Chad and we are set to rejoin day five. Action has been fast and furious here at the Rio as more and more of the short stacks are falling but Tom Schneider's chip stack is growing. Wow. The 2007 player of the year is now our chip leader with 2.2 million and the list of well-known players doesn't end there. Joe Seabock. Pralad Friedman and Kenny Tran are still in the hunt as well. While over at table two, we now find Antonio Esfandiari as well as actor Lou Diamond Phillips. Stuck in the middle with Lou. And at our featured table, we still have Jeff Schulman along with Bertrand Elke Grosvillier. Elke's made a name for himself with aggressive play, but here of late, he's been pretty tame. It's too bad he goes by Elke. It'll be fun to say nice hand, Bertrand. Yeah. Good game, How do you pronounce it? Bertrand? Yeah, Bertrand. Bertrand. French way, but... Well, that's not as funny to them. Never mind. Elke's good. It has been a rough go for Elke so far today. Let's take a look at some of the chip counts right now. Tom Schneider leads a closely bunched group in the chip stratosphere. Former chip leader Matt Affleck not far behind in second place. And Peter Eastgate's defense is still very much alive, while Phil Ivey has lost almost one million chips already today. All right, let's get back to play at the featured table. Randy Propson on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam. Looks down at pocket fours. He studied consumer science at the University of Wisconsin. Consumer science? He could have just moved in with me and saved four years of tuition. <laughs> he raises the action to uh, 23,000. Folded over to Elke Grospelier with pocket fives. Grospelier started calling himself Elke when he became a pro gamer. Oh. You want to play 20,000, 40,000 limit for the rest of the hand? <laughs> Probably not. Depends, depends on the flop. So it's the Yahtzee Kingpin against the former video gamer. 10-6 King. Grosbelier's pocket fives are still best. That seems more like a $2, $4 flop than $20,000, $40,000. Props in first to act. I guess he wants to play 40-80. He makes it 40000 Well, the amateur wants to see if that flop missed Grosbelier and hopes that bet could end matters. With just fives, Grosbelier. I want to get a new flop. <laughs> he wants a new flop, and he folds. New flop. Get a new flop. Nice time. One pair. One small pair. Good play by Propson, the Yahtzee savant. So Randy takes a small pot from Elke, but that's the way the day has been going for Grosbelier. His stack has been slashed almost in half, and that surely cramps his style. Patience will be the key. He knows he can't win it today, but he can lose it. Norman, the field is getting smaller, and while there are still plenty of players looking to continue their first deep run, there are a few left who've won before, and some who have come oh so close. Lon, do you see that in the distance there? It's the end of this tournament, and everyone is starting to think maybe, just maybe, for Joe Hashem, Peter Eastgate, and Dan Harrington, this may be a chance to make history again. For Dennis Phillips, Jeff Schulman, and Phil Ivey, this may be a chance to take care of unfinished business. And for the rest of us, this should be a main event to remember. Jeff Schulman remembers his first main event in 2000. He finished seventh. Chris Ferguson won it all that year. Let's head out to the field now and check in on another player who's come close to the title before, Phil Ivey. He finished 10th in 2003. Right now, Phil has re-raised Denmark pro Mads Anderson. Action on Hamid Nurofschan, who comes over the top with all his chips. So back to Anderson. He lays it down. So now the decision to Phil Ivey. You know, it's tough to sit here and watch my main man, Phil Ivey's chip stack diminishing, his main event hopes dwindling, and guys I've never heard of pushing him around. 
Ivy's going to give it up. Painful. Good pull. It says good pull. You're going to give Phil Ivy information? Oh, he says. Now he knows it was a good fold. It would have broke me if it had folded around. I I was looking. Ivy not broke yet, but it sounds like he came close. Phil was up to almost $1.3 million at the start of the day, but he's been stuck in reverse. Last year's third-place finisher, Dennis Phillips, is facing a bet from Pat O'Malley on a board of Jack 4-4 four, four, Deuce. I'm all in. And Dennis raises all in. O'Malley, an insurance executive from Cleveland. O'Malley will give it up. You know, sometimes I look at Dennis Phillips and I can swear he won the main event. Phillips moving close to the one million chip mark. Take it easy, Dennis. Take it easy. What an amazing run by Phillips. A true amateur trying to make back-to-back -back main event final tables. That would be like a street artist painting the Mona Lisa and Whistler's mother on back-to-back -back canvases. There's the man who knocked Dennis out last year, world champ Peter Eastgate. Once again, mixing it up with Gabe Walls. Walls put out a big bet on the river of a quarter million. <laughs> Peter Eastgate makes the call. Walls turns over two spades for the spade flush. And Peter makes that icky face that usually signals he's got an icky hand. Handing chips to Walls, who's now up to 1.7 million. Like Dennis Phillips, Peter Eastgate's been on a remarkable run. He survived everyone last year. He survived 95% of the field this year. To another world champion, 95 winner Dan Harrington, and a hand right now with Charlie Elias, who already has the check mark holding pocket queens on a very scary board. River card is a tray of diamonds. Elias first to act. That's out 40,000. Harrington, another remarkable story in the making, hoping for his fifth main event final tape. A raise to a half million from Action Dan. Action Dan bluffing with more than half of his stack right here. Look at that board. Can Charlie Elias call this raise? Wow, and he does. What a gutsy call with the Queens. And sheepishly, Action Dan shows nothing. Oh. Great read by the 26-year-old Australian amateur. Harrington has made main event final tables in each of the last three decades, but his shot for another one this year just took a blow. Action Dan in free fall. Good thing he's got the neck brace. <laughs> All right, let's head over to table two now, where the magician Antonio Esfandiari has taken up residence. Antonio won his only bracelet in 2004. Pot limit hold him. Ace king offsuit. Antonio's brother Pasha also cashed in this main event, finishing 371st. Antonio raises it to 32,000. Lou Diamond Phillips still in the field. 7 6 off. He mucks. Is Lou Diamond related to Dennis Phillips? Not that anybody knows of. Now on 22 year old Australian Daniel Nielsen with Ace King offsuit. And he re raises to 98,000. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a good 2009 World Series of Poker. Antonio planning a theatrical exit. And he is all in. I call. All in. And a call from Nielsen. All that excitement. Did you have ace queen? Play. Nielsen disappointed he had to stand up for nothing. Clubs, punish him one time for playing ace king. <laughs> I, I got you paid. Clubs. I got diamonds. Like, I'm at least 51%. What's your name, sir? I will go to your house and wash your house. I will wash your car if you put clubs out there. I will wash your car. I swear. I give you my word. It's a much better performance than I've ever given. <laughs> the dealer should make Antonio wash his house. That's what he said first. <laughs> ace king versus ace Up. king. Eight, Trey, diamonds. eight, two diamonds. I will break your car <laughs> if you deliver a diamond, diamond. I will vandalize your car. You I will Boy, Antonio turns on you in a hurry. <laughs> Turn card oh. is a club, and we'll have a chop pot. Nice That's a lot of activity for very little accomplishment. Did you specify how many clubs had to be there? Because there's two clubs there. So. Well, you know. I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with you. I... <laughs> All right. Always excited. That was fun. The good times will continue for Antonio, but he has to stop chopping pots if he wants to win this thing. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Back inside the Rio, where we find action underway already at the featured table. Randy Propson with pocket jacks moved all in over the top of Scott Buller's raise of 93,000. Action back on Buller, who will be all in if he makes the call. You got Ace King? <laughs> We got the same hand. I call. Buller makes the call to put himself at risk. Buller, the train conductor, props in the Yahtzee guy. Oh. Buller has the best of it. Getting tanked on by Queens? <laughs> I was going to go pro in Yahtzee, Lon, but I did poorly on the Wonderlick test. <laughs> it's been an up and down day for Buller. Right now, finds himself at risk. 
Here's the flop. 7-4. Deuce. Buller has to love that. Buller with a double up in progress. I suck. <laughs> now the turn guard. Oh, he sucks out. That jack puts Buller on the edge. Yeah, now Buller needs a two-outer to survive. He's got to have a queen. Rivers oh! another jack. A Yahtzee. Buller got all his chips in good, but then got crushed by every jack in the deck. And he'll catch the first train back to Nebraska. Well, if the turn didn't get Buller, the river was going to. I wonder if there's a, a World Series of Yahtzee main event. <laughs> All right, let's head back into the field right now. Pralad Friedman is just a bystander as Kara Scott is all in. Kara with King Jack of Diamonds was called by Zolt Elospi, who has King Queen of Spades. Kara pushed all in with just 12 big blinds left. The flop is 6-10-4. Elospi still ahead with a better kicker. Kara with a flush draw. When your name is Kara Scott Chad, there's always hope. Turn card now. It's a diamond, and she turns the flush to double up. Last year, Argentinian Veronica Dubul became the first woman ever to cash in back-to-back -back main events. This year, Kara Scott Chad became the second woman to do it. So Kara with a double up, up to 264,000. Lady luck shines on my lady again. Boy, I'm glad my wife Tony doesn't watch these telecasts. To one of the other remaining women in the field, Nicole Pepe, who flopped bottom two pair, contemplating a big re-raise from Tom Lutz, who has top pair with a straight draw. I'm all in. Pepe re-raises all in. And Lutz makes the quick call. In straight now. Nicole at risk and ahead. Oh, this is a huge one. Holy buckets. After the flop, these hands pretty much played themselves, and it has produced a massive pot. Nicole Pepe at risk. Lutz, a poker pro that lives in Vegas. He's a four on the turn. He's still behind. But right now, the poker pro from Long Beach, California, trying to hold on. Lutz can still knock out Pepe with a non-club jack, 10, 8, 6, or 4. River card is a deuce, and Pepe will double up. That's the biggest pot we've seen in this main event, and it puts Pepe in second place with over 2.5 million chips. Hmm. Nicole Pepe Chad? You are one fickle front runner, my friend. Back to table two now where Antonio Esfandiari has a chance to take out one of the other women. Esfandiari with King Jack of Spades called the all-in of Becky Campbell, who's holding pocket nines. Still smiling, baby. Good for you. <laughs> Campbell's nickname is Smiley. Same deal goes. If three spades and I win the pot, I wash your card. You want to knock me out? Or just a king or a jack. <laughs> I actually do. <laughs> You're a bad man, Antonio. The flop is queen, four, seven, a couple of spades. <laughs> Looks like I'm washing your car. <laughs> Antonio now a favorite in the hand. Campbell, a computer on, program from Louisiana, still with the best hand right now. Turn card. Oh, is that spade? Get the sponge and bucket. Antonio knocks out <laughs> Becky Campbell. All right. I have to go to his house and watch his car. It was nice playing with you. Playing with you. Why do the celebrities get all the hugs? Don't I know it. She gets the hug and almost $33,000. I gave him, I told him I'd do it. Verbal contract. Verbal contract. If I don't do it in the next six months, I give you 10 grand. That you want in writing. He is the constant source of entertainment for the dealers and the crowd, but lately Antonio has been working hard to get his poker skills to match his personality. Well, if you must know, I hired a life coach. I have not been playing my best poker in the last few years. So I just really haven't cared. I'll just sit here and kind of ride the coattails, you know? <laughs> and I've been having an incredible amount of fun traveling all around the world, partying way more than I should. How much the pants Mike? <laughs> <laughs> but at the end of the day, I am a professional poker player, and I really should focus on my game. And I get on the phone with my coach every morning. I basically have to do whatever he says. I'm in. I have to be in bed at a certain time before a tournament. I can't go out. I would drink, but... If I break any of these certain rules, I have to pay Phil Locke a certain amount of money. How can I do this? Which would hurt me more than anything in the world. You are a sick fucking man. I've just been in the zone the last four or five days. I am just so ready to win everything. Like destiny, right? And I'm gonna win everything. I feel it. As Babe Ruth said it, what did he do? He went like this and knocked the ball out. The kid is back. Antonio's drawn up the paperwork on that car washing deal. Esfandiari has struggled since winning his bracelet in 2004 with just seven caches in the last five World Series. Back to the feature table now for the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Wild Card Hand. Your chance to play along and guess what the concealed hole cards are. Tonight's celebrity guesser is Norman Chad. Pocket nines for Tyler Patterson. 
Patterson, a former poker dealer, now a poker pro. And he raises it to 26,000. He's in middle position, so I'm going to put him on pocket nines. Good guess, but that's not the guy we're working on. Randy Thompson, he has the wild card hand. I've got to delve into a Yahtzee mine, plus this guy claims he never works. On the button. Oh, that's true. Propson? We'll just call. Well, Propson is probably putting Patterson on a medium pair from middle position, so I think he would call with overcards. Maybe King Queen suited, more or less. Small blind Jeff Schulman folded. Big blind Elke Grosbelier gets out of the way, so heads up. It'll be Patterson against the mystery cards of Randy Propson. Here's the flop. Four, eight, queen. Any tells there? Well, I think the queen hit props. Patterson, no improvement to his pocket. Nines, bets 42,000. I think props must be recalling something I said during the 2006 main event. He makes the call. It Turn was quite point. fun. <laughs> it's a twos. If I'm Patterson, I'd worry about Propson's call on the flop. I don't know if my nines are good, but he's going to bet again and find out if they are. 65,000 this time. 140. Raise. Wow. On that board, Propson raises. That raise would tell me I'm beat if I'm Patterson. I think Propson's got a queen with a good kicker. King, queen, maybe even ace, queen. Tyler Patterson reaching for chips, so no fold here. Just a call. Patterson with a different read than me. What a surprise. <laughs> River card now. A tray of clubs. That's a mishmash board. You know, if Propson's got ace queen or king queen in his hand, he'd be very comfortable with that board. Patterson slows down and checks. 165. 165,000 from Propson. That feels like a value bet, Lon. Like he's hoping a pocket pair will call him. Patterson has called him down on the turn. Can he do it here on the river? Well, he's getting three and a half to one on a call here. It's tempting, especially against a Yahtzee professional, but it smells like top pair to me. Patterson will give it up. Propson takes Can it. I go him? You want to see us in? <laughs> Elkie thinks it might be Funny. fishy. Pop it up. Pair of queens. Ace queen, Lon. I am king of the world. I nailed another one. Shows the ace queen of spades. She flopped top pair. I showed the ace queen of spades. Elkie showed the ace queen of spades. Hey, thanks, Elkie. I nailed it. <laughs> Patterson gets a little help from Elkie on the Jack Link's beef jerky wild card hand, but Randy Propson gets the chips. I really nailed it. And he's over a million now. Welcome back to the Rio. Action continues here on day five of the main event. Back at our featured table, Jeff Shulman hoping to make his second main event final table with pocket fours. Shulman has cashed four times in the WPT championship. That's a $25,000 buy-in event. He raised it to three times the big blind to $30,000. On for a spellier, Jack Ten of Hearts. Elke won a WPT title in 2008 worth $1.4 million. He also won a European Poker Tour title in 2008 worth $2 million. Rospelier makes the call. He'll go heads up with Shulman. The flop is... 4-8 King. That gets both. Shulman with a set of fours. Grosbelier with a heart flush draw. That's an action flop line like, like in the movies. Shulman comes out with 60,000. Can't afford to slow 60, play there. 000. Well, you may recall he did slow play a set against Andrew Black, but this is a different board, a flush draw out there, and a different opponent. Grosbelier will hang around. Turn card now. Two of spades. Shulman still best. And Jeff Shulman loves seeing that blank on the turn. Slides out 120000 Elke no longer getting the right price to call here. He's on the flush draw. But, but let's see if he runs through the stop sign on the pot odds. Elke's aggressive, but not usually reckless. It's too expensive, and Elke lays it down. Shulman takes the pot. Disciplined lay down from Grospelier. Decides not to chase any longer. But not before giving up almost 100,000 chips to Shulman, who's now up to almost 580,000, which is still below the chip average in the room of about 700,000. Tom Schneider still the chip leader with 2.7 million. And there is our chip leader currently in a hand with Tahir Ali Sheik after a flop of five tray four. Ali Sheik bet 220,000. Schneider folded, and Ali Sheik will take that pot. Schneider won two braces in 2007, but they were in stud and Omaha events. No limit hold'em, not his best game. All right, at another table, another pro who's been deep before, Kenny Tran, and a hand with David Patton. The river card put a third heart on the board. I don't know, Kenny. I'm either, you either got me crushed or you actually hit it. My money's on Kenny Tran, particularly if it's a cash game. Kenny bet 45000 Patton makes the call. 
Oh, you didn't Kenny see. shows the nut flush for the victory. No, I throw man face up and then do a count. Kenny Tran making his second deep run in the main event in three years. He finished 16th in 2007 to another pro still left in the field with ace king Joe Seabock just raised all in against John Lou preflop with queen seven of hearts. Lou owns a nail salon in Los Angeles. And he's your kind of guy. He's a once a week league bowler. 172 more. I love bowlers. Luke getting more than two to one on a call here, and he can't afford it. He oh, does make the call. He has hit. Joe covered, so Seabach at risk, but ahead. Seabach would have preferred if Lou had laid that one down. I like seeing that better than King's race. So here we go to the flop. Seabach at risk, six, five, four. Seabach's best, but Lou with an up and down straight draw. Yeah, Seabach hates saying that. He's got to fade a lot of cards now. Turn card pairs Lou. Seabach in big trouble. Well, if a three or eight comes, they'll split the pot with a straight on the board. Seabach can win it outright with an ace or a king. Otherwise, he's gone. River card. Oh, oh. it's the king. Just in time to keep Joe Seabach in the room. Well, there was no reason for Joe Seabach to start putting his backpack on. That's a losing mentality. Joe, you're a winner. You won the pot. Act the part. So Joe Seabach went all in with Ace King, and he's kissing that king. That's what doubled him up. <laughs> That was, about, that was about as almost as you can get. <laughs> well, Joe will get to keep his seat and a few more chips, but still below average with a lot of work to do. Let's head back to table two where we find Antonio Esfandiari in a battle of the blinds with Daryl Jace. Antonio leads with King four against Jace's five. Trey of hearts going to the flop. The flop is a 7-8. All spades. Esfandiari picks up a flush draw. How come uh, Antonio's not promising to wash this dealer's car if he hits a flush? Antonio bets 42000 Antonio on the draw. Jace has no draw. But he's got chips, and he's bluffing at it. A raise to 92000 Wow, the 21-year-old comes over the top with squad douche. And Esfandiari won't be pushed around. Still, Antonio might be thinking, oops, I don't have a hand yet. Turn guard. Now he has a hand. Antonio with the nut flush. Antonio with the check mark. That's 115,000. Hey, Antonio gets there and he doesn't slow down. Well, the good news for Jace is that he's picked up a straight draw. The bad news is it's meaningless. And he's going to call for 115,000. Jace says he learned to play poker by watching TV and reading books. It looks like he learned by watching me. <laughs> the river card, king of clubs. Esfandiari already with the check mark. Antonio, getting short on chips, can either go all in here or check to see if Jace makes a play for the pot. Antonio chooses shove. And an immediate fold from Daryl Jace. The all-in ended his charade. Antonio should be washing Daryl Jace's car. He takes a nice pot. Now we can start playing a little poker, boys. Well, whatever Antonio's been playing up till now, it's working. Poker. Main event. Back inside the Rio, let's check in on Dennis Phillips, who's in a hand right now with Blair Hinkle. Phillips checked a Trey King Trey flop. Action on Hinkle, the Kansas City Poker Pro. Thinks about it, bets 23000 You know, there is room on the back of Dennis's cap for my autograph. <laughs> that is true. Right. Dennis raises, makes it 40000 more. Dennis Phillips with the check raise, which usually signals a hand. Hinkle knows that as well and lays it down. Dennis is still technically a commercial trucking manager. I guess he just acts like he's a poker pro. Dennis approaching 900,000. Blair and his brother Grant won bracelets last year. We've seen a lot of brothers in this main event. JC's brother Hen played but did not cash. JC just moved all in against Nasser El Nasser. JC will not be knocked out here as El Nasser folds. JC takes that pot. He's hanging around. Got almost 390,000 chips. But there are still two brothers left in the field. The Bilzerians seated next to each other still. Dan on the right, currently a bystander, is Adam contemplating the all-in of Jesse Chinney. Chinney's kings are crushing Adam's sixes, but Adam makes the call. Yeah, yeah bad call. Bill Zarian looking for a six. The river card is a queen, and Chinny will win and double up to Adam Bilzerian. Chinny's a University of Maryland grad line. We are smarter than we look. I'll play it two hours. All right, gentlemen, the dealer coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a short stack. 
The older brother putting the younger brother in his proper place. You get the feeling these two would sell the other to win this tournament. We asked several players what they would be willing to give up to win the main event, which we delve further into in this edition of The Nuts. What would I give up to win the main event? What would I give up? <laughs> That's actually a really hard question. I would give up ice cream. And I love ice cream. Chocolate. Coffee. No, I don't know. I would give up poker for life. I would switch to, like, the World Series of Go Fish. I'd give up my firstborn son to win that again. I don't have any kids, so that's easy for me to do. <laughs> would you go to hell for a bracelet? Yeah. I would. I would give up sex for a while. Wow. He's committed. One month. One lonely month. That's not giving up sex. That's just, like, a normal month for most humans. I'd give up my girlfriend for sure. <laughs> That's a joke. Don't you put that on there. You know, I don't think I'd cut off any body parts. Your ring finger doesn't come in that handy. I would give up my pinky toe. Ah! I would give up the money. The money. Give me the bracelet. Give me the title. Give me history. I'd give up the bracelet. Yeah. I'm a poker purist. I'm after the cash. I don't want to give anything up. I want to earn it the good old-fashioned way. I want to do it on my own. Norman, I'm wondering, what would you give up to have Phil Ivey win the big one? Well, I inadvertently gave up sex a number of years ago. That should be good enough. Thanks, Norman. Too much information. And I should fold it over to Elke Grosbelier. Elke looks down at King Queen of Clubs. Grosbelier lived in Korea as a pro gamer Great. and says Koreans 25, couldn't pronounce his first name, so he adopted Elke. Elke with a raise to 25000 I can't pronounce either of his names. Folded to Randy Propson, five tray of hearts in the big blind. Propson says poker is like life. Smart people win and stupid people lose. He calls for 15,000. Is that smart or stupid with five tray? We'll see. Seven, queen, six. Gross Bellier with a pair of queens and a flush draw. Propson with a gut shot. Check. Randy checks. That's about the 11th or 12th best possible flop for Elkie's hand. And Elke will bet 33000 with that draw. We'll see if Propson is smart or stupid. Call. He calls. Well, he looks like he might be trying to get cute with his five tray down the road. And it's another club. Grosbelier hits his flush. Propson wondering why he played five tray. He checks again. Well, the check is smart. Now, that's not the best turn card for Elke Lon. The ace of clubs, for instance, would have been better, but it's still a good one. And he bets 57000 with it. This is not a good time for my Yahtzee man to get cute. Be smart. You look hungry. Randy saw something in Grosbelier's face and folds. Look, you want to use your button? No, I don't care. Hurry up. Come on, we got hands to play, man. <laughs> What's wrong with you? Actually, a lot has been going wrong for Elky today, but perhaps the tide is turning back in his favor. Presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Back inside the Rio, where action continues at our featured table. Jeff Schulman having a slow and steady day five so far. The same cannot be said for Elke Grosbelier. Lost quite a bit of his stack, but still in decent shape. Action on Sam Edwards on the Jack Link's Beef Jerky Pocket Cam. Queen Fish. Jack of Hearts. I don't know if he's eating, chewing gum, or chewing his own cud, but you really shouldn't raise with that much lower jaw activity going on. He does raise the 30,000. Action on Jeff Schulman on the button. With pocket aces, you love to see those on day five. That's a steady chew. My max little bit there. Schulman's going to re-raise it to 100,000. Jeff Schulman cranks it up. In the small blind, Elke with pocket nines. You know, Elkie's itching to play, but Shulman has not played many hands today, and his re-raise might tell Elkie he's got a bigger pocket pair. And a good lay down, but a tough one for Elkie. Now back to the 24-year-old chewer. Yeah, okay, son, do you want to chew or do you want to play? You can't do both. Edwards will lay it down, and Shulman will take that pot after his big re-raise. Even in a somewhat unsightly striped shirt, Shulman somehow looks intimidating. Well, Jeff has almost doubled his chip stack on this day five. Elkie's still wondering if his laydown of the pocket nines was the right laydown, but he did pick up some signs from Jeff and got out of the hand. All right, we continue action here at the featured table on Randy Propson. Pocket sixes. 
He spent one summer working at a steel mill and seems intent on never working again. <laughs> and he's going to raise it to 30,000, three times the big blind. Shulman coming off pocket aces. Queen Trey, he won't play that. Shulman kind of works for a living. He publishes card player. Elke with queen four. He lays it down. Rolf Slotboom, a 35-year-old Amsterdam poker pro with ace queen. Are they drilling for uranium somewhere nearby? <laughs> he moves all in for his last 138,000 chips. Back to Propson. All right, I'm going to gamble. Ah, he's going to call that re-raise. I hope I have you dominated in some way. No, no domination. Slot boom at risk. We're going to need some picture cards. Two of the queens are already gone. That's why slot boom is only 37%. Lots of aces and queens, man. Okay, concentrate. Aces and queens. We need aces and queens. Flop. Five, trace, seven. Ooh, that's not very high. Slot boom's nickname is ace, and he'd love to see one. Turn card now. Concentrate, man. Aces and queens, you can do it. Nine of diamonds. Yes. Are there picture cards in the deck? Let's try to peel out an ace or a queen. Come on, man. It's aces or queens? Ah, uh, seven of clubs. No picture cards for Slot Boom. Propson knocks out the Amsterdam Pro. It is Slot Boom's third straight main event cash. Slot Boom's a former dealer himself. He tried to give this dealer all the advice he could, but came up short. Well, if it's sunny and snowing outside, he seems pretty well prepared for it. So another pot for Randy Propson, who after losing a few chips to Elkie earlier, is now approaching a million chips once again. Back to the field, where Kara Scott and her pocket aces are poised to eliminate Bob Loria, holding ace, king of clubs. Loria, a poker pro from Norwich, Connecticut, has cashed in the main event three of the last four years. The flop is queen, ten, nine. Loria with flush and straight draws. She's still smiling, but those pocket aces are in danger. <laughs> Turn card now. Is a club and Loria hits his flush. He'll double up. Pocket aces again cracked at the main event. Tara Scott being Loria's benefactor at this table. Well, I'm going to have to talk to somebody about getting Kara Scott Chad some more chips. She is under 100,000 right now. Back to Dan Harrington. He's facing a raise from Eric Cloutier. Dan with a nut flush draw trails Cloutier, who flopped a pair of kings. I'm all in. Dan is going to gamble. With 40 big blinds left, Harrington decides to make a stand with his draw. Cloutier makes the call to put the 95 champ at risk. And one of the greatest main event performers ever could be staring at his last hand this year. Five times Action Dan has finished 17th or better at the main event. He's going to need to improve here to stay alive. Turn card now. Tray of diamonds. Action Dan needs some help. And Dan Harrington now has to have a club on the river. The river card is a seven of spades. That won't do it. Dan Harrington knocked out by Eric Cloutier. Yeah, I was hoping he didn't have the ace with the king. Dan finishes in 252nd place. Will win almost $33,000. And the former minor league hockey player shoots and scores a big knockout in this main event as Dan Harrington leaves to a nice and well-deserved round of applause. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Welcome back to the Rio. There is the bracelet that will be awarded on November 10th to the main event champion. Elke Grospelier, one of the top pros still in the field, hoping that that will be his first World Series bracelet. Jeff Schulman is another. And in fact, there's a lot of players in the field who have had main event success, as we see on our Full Tilt Poker.net tournament ticker. Eleven have finished in the top 20 of the main event. Four have made final tables, and two past champions are still alive, including the defending champ, Peter Eastgate, who's looking to add more chips. Here he called the all in of Bruce Perry. Eastgate's flush is way ahead. Perry went to the University of Tennessee with Chris Moneymaker. They lived in the same frat house. He needs a queen or five here. River card is a deuce of spades. Eastgate will win it with his flush. Bruce Perry knocked out in 250th place. And Lon Peter Eastgate hanging around, hanging around, hanging around, and finally picking up some chips. Finally, over a million from the youngest main event winner to the youngest Academy Award nominee ever, Justin Henry. All in. The hand that gets knocked out most, I think, is Queen. Justin and I are on the same page. I'm not even an actor. His ace queen dominated by Sean Nolan's ace king. And here's the flop. And there's a queen for Henry. Good news for the dreaded ace queen. 
Turn card. Three of clubs. Henry with a flush draw, taking one of Nolan's outs. So Nolan now needs a not club king or jack to eliminate Justin Henry. River card is an eight of diamonds, and so his ace queen comes through when he needed it most. Nolan doubles up Henry. Still breathing. Still breathing. He's got chips, but still well short of the chip average of about 800,000. Phil Ivey contemplating an all-in from Mads Anderson, who flopped a pair of sixes. Ivey with two sevens, but this is for most of Ivey's chips. Anderson pushed with 15, 16 big blinds left. Tough call with middle pair, and Ivey doesn't have that many chips left to work with. All right, I call it. And Phil does make it. All in. Anderson oh, shows sixes. Ivy ahead with the sevens. Yeah, Phil, you're ahead. Wow. Now let's just hold it and start building up that chip stack again. But if Phil gets unlucky here, he will be decimated. All right, turn card with Anderson at risk. It's a nine. Anderson with a gut shot straight draw. That gets Phil's attention. So now Anderson needs a six, ten, or eight to stick around. The river card is a five of spades, and Anderson will lose all his chips to Phil Ivey. I think Phil was feeling a little pressure that time. I know he doesn't sweat, but he saw his life and my life flashing in front of him. I don't think other players should ever be allowed to touch Phil Ivey. Now to Joe Seabach, who's facing an all-in from Ashley Chung after the flop. Chung with pocket tens, Seabach pocket jacks, two queens on board. And Seabach will make that call. Chung at risk and behind. Well, Joe Seabach's an honorary member of Team Chad, so we got to root for him, too. All right, turn card is a seven of clubs. No help to Chung. Ashley Chung needs a ten or his main event is over. River card is another queen, and Joe Seabach will win it with a better full house. Seabach, another player just hanging around and finally picking up some chips. Uh, now we're rolling, baby. Now we got a game. We got no chance to shoot. I know. Where are you going? Whoa, 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 whoa. Where are you going? Can I petition? Where's Polanski? Get Pollock in here. Let's keep you here. Joe has won some key pots with that dealer today. This is his first big World Series showing in a couple of years as his attention and time have been focused elsewhere. I love playing poker, but there's so much more to life than playing poker. So I just decided to start up Poker Road. We want to take people inside the world of professional poker in a different way. Oh, we got to get back to have a glass of wine. I get to basically run a company with a bunch of my friends, you know, and my dad, which is an amazing situation. Sadly, it's definitely affected my game. There's no question. There's pre-Poker Road Seabock. We got some final tables, and then there's post-Poker Road Seabock. Thank you, shot. And then here. But you have to fight to focus when you have these other things going on. If I'm not playing poker, I'm talking about it or doing something at the radio show. I'm getting texts every five seconds. I'm getting phone calls. People are coming up to me. What do we do about this? What do we do about this? This happened. Blah, 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 blah. You just kind of have to try to draw that line. And then just when you're playing, you're playing, you know, and I've had a hard time doing it. You just have to persevere. Occasionally you'll win one. It's probably one of those things at some point I'll have to decide, you know, hey, I want to be a poker player or hey, I want to be a business person. Up until now, I haven't had to. But during the main event, I've told people, look, if you come up and you ask me a question about poker, I'm going to punch you in the face. And that goes true for Barry, too. PokerRoad.com is a very entertaining website, and the bear, Barry Greenstein, actually works for the Cub, Joe, in that business venture. Let's go to table two right now. Antonio Esfandiari enjoying his first deep run in the main event. Also, right now, action is on Kevin O'Donnell. O'Donnell, a restaurant owner in Scottsdale, Arizona, with ace jack of clubs. O'Donnell does quite well here at the World Series. Ten career caches, his second deep run in the main event in the last four years. He's going to raise it up to 29000 Antonio... 10-7 off. You know, Kevin O'Donnell might be a good life coach for Antonio. Antonio lays it down on Lou Diamond Phillips with pocket sixes. I think Mr. Phillips and myself both could use a, a life coach when it comes to the matrimonial area. <laughs> he calls for 29000 and he will go heads up against O'Donnell, who finished 21st in the 06 main event. Lou enjoying his first main event cash. There's the flop. It is 6 7 ace. A set of sixes for Lou and potential disaster for O'Donnell as he paired his ace. O'Donnell comes out with 52,000 with his pair of aces. Well, 52,000 seems like a good bet, but O'Donnell is crushed. Lou Diamond Phillips with the three sixes raises to 125,000. O'Donnell's got to figure out if LDP, the actor, is pretending to show strength. We know he is strong. I don't think I have the best hand, sir. That's a savvy restaurateur. He folds. I'll tell you right now, you don't have the best hand. 
Oh, that was the best hand. Phillips over 400,000, but still a lot of work to be done. Uh, change of underwear, please. <laughs> the main event can be stressful. Antonio knows that. Some just handle the pressure better than others. Back to the Rio, Matt Affleck is once again the chip leader, but how about Nicole Pepe in second place? Quite an impressive run today. Some other notable names, Peter Eastgate's title defense has a lot of life to it. Joe Hasham and Phil Ivey still very much alive. And there is Affleck, who appears to be rather ho-hum about it all. I feel badly that the chip lead and the chance for an $8.5 million first prize are boring Matt Affleck to death. Both of his caches came in this 2009 World Series. Over to another one of the bigger stacks in the room, Dan Bilzerian, who's been moved from his brother Adam's table, but now seated with Joe Hashem. Currently both in a five-way pot after the turn. Action on Tommy Vitas. After three others checked, he comes out with 49,000. Joe Hashem lays it down. Hashem preaches patience at the main event, and he practices what he preaches. Jose Gomez says no thanks. Dan Bilzerian folds, as does Mihail Stoikov. Vitas shows ace high. Vitas, originally from Queens, New York, now lives in Las Vegas. He just looks like he should be living in Queens or Las Vegas. He'll stack those new chips. He made one final table at this year's World Series. Joe Hashem below chip average, but he knows how to pace himself in the big one. Over now to a very short stack, Kara Scott. She's all in. Kara all in? No, 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 no. All right, let's go. Paul Barron's going to call her down with rags. Scott at risk. This fellow's trying to knock out my girl with five trays. No bad beats. have a sweat. Just pull like four six of diamonds. And the flop. Oh, and there's a five for Barron to lead. They did. Turn is another five, and that will end it. Kara Scott is gone. I am crest fallen. No, he couldn't do quads. That's a shame. Kara Scott gone in 238th place. You do not knock out Kara Scott, Chad, without answering to me. Let's, let's run a check on his plates. Good luck, everyone. You really want to have that one. 104th last year, 238th this time around. She's a player. And she's a pretty good poker broadcaster over in England. See you at home. I've got to give her my address. <laughs> Back to the featured table now. Action is on Jeff Shulman. I believe Jeff Shulman's beard has thickened significantly during day five. <laughs> Eight tray, and he will not play that. I guess he only plays aces. Elke Grospellier. Pocket aces. Pocket aces could give Elke a jump start finally. 000. A raise to 25,000. Elke is originally from France, now lives in London. Patrick Hanato, also from France, with ace queen. Ace queen's a loser in any nation. A re-raise to 64,000. Oh, this is setting up nicely for Elke. Tyler Patterson with pocket tens. And he's going to re-raise to 175. Elke's got to be drooling. It's now a midsummer night's dream for Elke. Come on in. Yep, that's the play. All in. And Hanato's got to realize these guys are playing in a different league. With ace queen, he'll fold. Up to Patterson. It would be wise for Patterson to fold. I call. He does not. He calls with his tens, and he'll be in trouble. Uh, I guess it's possible Elke had ace king in that spot. Otherwise, Patterson was buried by a bigger pocket pair. And this is the big pot that Elkie's been craving all day. His ace is against the tens. Elkie about to get a really nice gift unless he gets unlucky. The flop now. Queen, six tray. Elkie's aces are still best. You can start wrapping that gift. Patterson's down to a two-outer now. He needs a ten. Turn card now. Is a king. No help to Patterson. Elkie in great shape here to double up. Patterson needs a 10 and a 10 only to ten knock out again. Bertrand Grospellier. The river card is a 6, and Grospellier does double up. Elke is back in business big time. He started this day 5 with almost 1.3 million chips, and after losing more than half of it, Elke has come all the way back. 
So far, it's been make or break on day five. Now we can start playing a little poker, boys. Antonio Esfandiari, Elki, and Joe Seabock will all continue their main event, as does Lou Diamond Phillips. Uh, change of underwear, please. But Justin Henry's main event came to an end with a 235th place finish. It was nice playing. Becky Campbell and Kara Scott are gone. Good luck, everyone. Leaving just three women, led by one of the chip leaders, Nicole Pepe. The field is now one world champion smaller after Dan Harrington's elimination, while Peter Eastgate and Joe Hashem are still hanging on. Take it easy, Dennis. Take it easy. And Dennis Phillips, Jeff Schulman, and Phil Ivey inch closer to perhaps finishing unfinished business. Next time, day five concludes. Until then, for Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. Thanks for watching the World Series of Poker.